Did you know that our best life is now? Yes. I mean, it's right now. <laughs> it is. It's not something that's coming later. This is the moment of our best life. This is true. To all of you listeners today, you were born to make the art of you. Mm. That's why we're here. You do that every day, don't you, Meg? <laughs> You're going to have to say, <laughs> is that what that I, is? I'm not here by myself. <laughs> Hi, Maggie. Hi. Is that what I'm doing? Yes. Making the art of me. Oh. Yeah. You any, know, any takers? <laughs> <laughs> Living your best life should be something that liberates your soul, mm. sets you free. And I just think that the way to get there day in and day out is we, like driving to wherever we're going. We drove down to Charleston, South Carolina the other day. And on the way, I'm thinking, okay, inhale possibility. Exhale creativity. Inhale possibility. and Exhale mm. creativity. I love that. And it works. It's mindset. And it's, yes. again, like we were talking about the other day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our podcast. <laughs> First of all. <laughs> Kinetic Believers. Welcome. KBs, all you guys, Maggie and I are here. And this is really different, isn't it? Just jumping right into the podcast. It is. Way. I'm kind of missing your your sort of call to call to action at the beginning where you tell us, you know, why we're here and who we are and what the heck we're doing. I <laughs> Just as that. a reminder, who am I? Why am I here? <laughs> well, you know why we're doing this is we were doing kind of the old school way where we have the, I don't know, it's not a jingle, but it could be one where you just open up and you got the music and bam, we're into the podcast. But so many of, we hear that so many of you are listening to these podcasts back to back. I can only imagine what it's like to listen to a 20 second can to open, you know, every 30, they, I 45 bet, minutes. I bet people would do like I, I was always doing and I was like mouthing everything along with our announcer <laughs> every <laughs> single day, like trying to perfect the lip sync <laughs> with the open. Sure. But I like this. Just dive right in. I do too. Get into the guts of whatever it is that we are gutting. Well, and we all, we all need, you and I need this podcast. The listeners, I know they, they've told us so many times they need this podcast and it's because of what you just said. It's mindset and, and mindset has to be stirred up or corrected or, or improved upon every single day. Every day is new. Every day, it, we're starting fresh with this thing. Well, KBs know how important it is and vital it is to enjoy this life in a way that we are attracting our best lives. But what does that even mean? What, what is a best life? Mm -hmm. The best life is in this moment. It has nothing to do with the car, the house, the family, anything, really. No things. It has everything to do with mindset. Because regardless of what may be going on in the world today, mm -hmm. it's our attitude yes. toward it that determines what our tomorrows are going to be like. I have to say that was, that was a weird uh, thing to learn uh, many years ago. Just the concept that you can really truly uh, change the things that are surrounding you and your the rest of your life, every experience that you have from here on out, you can quite literally change it with the proper mindset, with a different mindset, with speaking different words. And, and it seems like, it seems like it should require more, but thank goodness that it doesn't. And it really is a difficult <laughs> thing when it, because it does look like it should require, require more. Like don't I need a hammer or something? <laughs> yeah, because you're looking at all this stuff that needs to be rearranged and changed and yes. like, I'm going to have to roll up my sleeves and go out here and move this stuff around. It reminds me, remember that show that used to come on? I, it only came on for a second, but probably for obvious reasons, but um, there were these two men and they would go into a, a house that needed to be uh, t torn down and they would just do it like by hand. That didn't last long. <laughs> I think they didn't last long. <laughs> exactly. Wasn't that weird? <laughs> that yeah, was wild. how interesting that was. In fact, the, the last one that I saw, I, thought, I think there were only a few of them, they were tearing down a, it was like an amusement park roller coaster or something. It was yeah. all steel, and and I don't even think they finished the show. They, these guys were pretty beaten battered. <laughs> but that's what it feels like when you're sitting here at the beginning of change. You know, you're looking at a roller coaster and someone says, dismantle this by hand. <laughs> right. Go. You're like, don't I need something? The way, we cha the way we change the world around us, if you want to change anything about our, your life, if you want to change you know, people around you, we don't change other people. That is an mm. abuse of dominion. Preach, we Steve. Preach change, to the choir. Change out, you change <laughs> yes. yourself. 
change your mindset, yes. meditate, go into that place, and you change yourself to change the world around you. Now, other people in our lives are going to think you're crazy, mm -hmm. that you've lost your, your mind because you don't seem disturbed like you should be. And I had someone the other day, and you remember, we were in a coffee shop, and we had just, we just watched a show the previous night. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a, a live performance in a theater. And this lady said, well, what did you think about it? And you could tell by the way she asked the question, she was expecting a negative response. Mm -hmm. What did you think about it? In sort of in a snarling way. And people want to set you up. People to, to agree with their discontentment, with their negative uh, perspective of life. But you know what? When you're living your best life, it should disturb the comfortable and comfort the disturbed. Mm. <laughs> and it will. You can count Wait, on Wait, let me it. write that down. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> Dad, everyone that I've ever known, it's fine. I'm comforting the disturbed. Don't well, worry about it. Well, think about it because you're getting out of your comfortable way of life. Yes. And there's nothing more that a person who is living in this round robin way yeah. of doing things in a repetitive lifestyle want to see then someone else peel away like yeah. where are you going like what are you doing with your life mm -hmm. why aren't you going to experience the way that we are and then also the people that are are disturbed and having a, a disturbed existence for example they are truly fearful and worried and mm. in doubt and all those things from perhaps watching the the news of the day where well, they're going to find comfort in your level of joy and your persistent happiness, overcoming the the obvious reasons why they think you should be disturbed like them. Well, and I want to go back for a second to uh, how you began what you were just talking about. So it's, it's an interesting concept to become aware of making sure that you're not going to be a critic. You know, you brought up the, the woman that was asking us about the show that we saw. Mm -hmm. And it is, and, and I guess it's ego. I guess it's ego that wants to be critical. Yes. That's the gut yes. reaction. Yes. And it's it's unbelievable what can happen when you get rid of that mindset and when you purpose to only uh, celebrate, and not in a mindless way, but in a way where you, you see the good and you see the great things and you see the effort and the talent and the and the love and the effort that, that people are, are putting into their lives. KBs have rededicated their lives to edifying, encouraging, championing, mm. lifting up, and uh, celebrating life around them as well as within them. Yeah. And this is what attracts the best life. This is truly what manifests wealth and the substance of joy and the substance of the things that we hope for. Quantum physical experiments at CERN, Maggie, back, you know, what was in 2012 specifically, while using the world's largest particle collider, physicists... Physicist, I'm sorry, I should be drinking my tea at the same time. Physicists <laughs> <laughs> proved that form forms don't really exist until something is imagined to exist. Mm. Until there's a bias for the existence of the form. And now that is a uh, the, the spooky manipulation of particles at great distances, but it's a reality. Mm -hmm. And if you take that reality from the, the quantum particle physical way of understanding how all how the universe works, and if you take that more to the macro, mm. you and myself and the world around us, the tangible that we can see, you begin to understand, we begin to understand how it is that Attitudes and gratitudes truly do form the world, form the reality mm -hmm. that you're going to experience regardless of what's going on around you. Because we're creating our own reality with our, the mindset of our expectations. And that's why it is so vital that as we go through the day that we are celebrating and championing, encouraging and um, uh, all those things for ourselves first and then those around us. Those are our neighbors. When you meet a stranger at the mall, at, at Target, in the restaurant, that's your neighbor in that moment. And you respond to them in unconditional love, regardless of who they are, regardless of their responses and reactions to you. Well, and it's so wonderful to hear the scientific basis for um, something that you've taught many times where you've, you've told us that desire 
is, is simply focus. Because many times we love to, to define desire as something we want, and that's just not the case. So according to um, the science of, of, of what you just talked about, it's, it's the focus that is, it's that bias. And that's such a perfect word for it because the bias is just like, you can kind of see it, you're leaning into something. And that, that can be a horrible something or it can be a wonderful something. But either way, that is how it works. And accepting that is, is the first step to... <laughs> to change, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I like to just sometimes go out for a drive, and I don't, I don't do it often, not as often as I used to. And yesterday, I, I'm just looking for an excuse to run down to the store. And on my way back, and I'm driving along. I'm in a great headspace, Maggie. I've been listening to some of my favorite music, and I'm just imagining some of the wonderful things that we have coming up in the next couple of weeks. And mm. And all, you know, just the things that we do going through the day and just how wonderful and splendid and marvelous our lives are. You and I sharing in this, this higher viewpoint of existence and I'm cruising along and this car comes over two lanes, just swerves over right in front of me and begins slowing down. And I think they're looking for a turn off or something, but I mean, you know, I'm having, to, it breaks my, my concentration. It breaks my, my... Your flow. My, my consciousness, yeah. and I'm, I'm here, the, the, the wave function of my consciousness is manipulating the universe around me, and I've got all these, <laughs> these rainbows and unicorns going and doing what they're supposed to be doing, and it is that magical, yes. It actually is, though. <laughs> and so, but, okay, that's, that is it's broken in that moment, mm -hmm. but I could feel, sense it, and there was a feeling, you could, I could feel this sense of for lack of a, a better word, anger start to rise up, you know, and it was, it was a knee jerk, like an emotional, mm -hmm. you can feel the surge of negative energy. And I felt it come from my stomach and it starts rising and I stopped it because I saw it and I knew what it was. And so I cast down that negative imagination immediately mm -hmm. brought it under control and said, no, you don't. Yeah. And I went right back into my higher viewpoint for existence, loving the neighbor that wanted to slow me down in traffic. But that's the work of a KB. Yeah. That's how we go through our day, not being controlled by emotions and negative feelings and being led off and astray into an area of, of decay, but maintaining that higher perspective and viewpoint. Because we can't go live in a cave. No. I mean, we are in this world. Now, we may not be of the world, but we're in it just yeah. like everybody else. And we are, at any given moment, regardless of circumstances around us, able to live our best life. And then the manifestation of the expectation is always manifesting and materializing day after day after day, as long as we're holding that higher viewpoint for perspective. And I guarantee you that the moment you move into a cave, someone's going to move into the cave next door and, and play their music too loud. <laughs> if that's what you, if, if yes, they're that's, going to do that. If, if you are focused on the exactly. negatives doing that, yes. because the, even the negative expectations, it creates that experiential reality, doesn't it? Yes. If, even if it comes and sets up camp in the cave beside of you. Well, and that's such a huge lesson for a KB. Um, and that's where journaling helps me the most. You know, you mentioned how quickly you nipped the, the ego, egoistic feeling, the sensation of negativity that was starting to. And really, it wasn't a part of you yet. It was just presenting itself to you. Like, would you like to to go to dinner, Steve, <laughs> you know, you want to go out sometime. It was an option, wasn't it? It was an option being presented mm -hmm. to you. And that's a that's huge, right. huge lesson for KBs that you, we have to nip these things quickly because they, they grow exponentially. And in the blink of an eye, you have a, a almost unbeatable monster on your hands. And so when I journal, I feel like I'm setting those intentions in stone, you know, almost like you're chiseling. And the more mm. you write it, the more mm. it becomes true. And it, that's what allows us in those moments to, to act quickly and efficiently and, and correctly. By the journaling, and you, you're keeping those expectations stirred up. So you are, you're telling yourself, you know what, I'm going out into the world today. And this is a possibility for me that someone's going to cut me off in traffic. And so rather than meditate on that possibility when it does show up, um, it, mm. they're having a negative effect on me, then I begin, if I do that... I'm putting down roots. Mm -hmm. I start articulating and internalizing a negative narrative and dialogue. And then it starts to manifest the same kind of 
ugly things to my life. Every human being is a cluster of energy. We are energy. And energy is positive or negative. Every form throughout the entire universe represents clusters of energy. And that's, that's all it is. And so we have control over the energetics that we are going to permit ourselves to, to communicate to the universe that's going to create the reality around us. And that's how we come into the natural. It's just spiritual beings having a natural experience. But we are still clusters of energy. But we have control over the energetics. We can turn a, a, a positive into a negative, or we can turn the negative into a positive. We do have a choice. It is an option. It's kind of like the, you can't keep a bird from flying over your head, but you can prevent it from building a nest in your hair. <laughs> yes. We're not victims of this. So that's, it's always a choice. And that's a big word, isn't it? Victim. Because victim, when it presents itself to us in life, the opportunity to be a victim. It comes with all kinds of bells and whistles. You know, it, it comes with this whole, uh, the full package of, no, people will, if you become a victim, then people will do all these things for you and life mm. will be easier. And I mean, it's amazing the lies that the story of, of victimization will tell us to try and get us to grab a hold of it. Um, because, you know, we are, um, for lack of a better word, work, working hard. You know, we're working hard at this life thing. We're, we're, pouring ourselves and, and all of our energy into the concept of progressing ourselves. And so when, you know, the, the temptation for something that it's a lie, but it, it presents as if it's going to make life easier. And it's important to, to know these things, to know what the, the true face of a thing. What are you identifying with? Yeah. Where is your identity? And, and that's really a great point, Meg, and, and something that I think is important to understand that we often talk about you know, the importance of coming into the now, into mm -hmm. the present moment, yes. and working on the space you're occupying in, this, in the moment of now, in present tense moment. But in doing so, to be successful as a KB, to be successful in life, living your best life, it is vital that you still identify with the positive identify with with life expansion growth i am joy i don't have joy i am that i am happiness i'm identifying with that yeah. i am prosperity i'm not trying to become prosperous i'm not trying to become rich i'm not trying to earn millions of dollars to put into a bank account i don't have to because i am a billion dollars i am uh, vastly wealthy. I am healthy. I am health. I'm not trying to become healthy. I am health. Mm -hmm. I am love. I am these things. Therefore, I am. And so that's the meditation of the KB. That is the identity that we conform ourselves to through the journaling process, through the positive affirmations and using our imaginations in a positive way with desire for those things. I want those things. I am those things. That's why I desire that. And this is what it looks like to, to the imagination. So I'm taking a pen in my journal and I'm constructing those thought forms in a way that I can see them in the present tense. And then I'm learning the language of it. That's what I'm going to tell you and Mama and everybody else and anybody that seems to care enough to ask me. I'm going to talk the talk of this, a per this person that I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say anything negative about myself, how I'm a victim, how I need this or I'm needy in any area of my life. If I have a sniffle, you're not going to hear about it. I'm not calling someone up on the, on the phone and saying, I feel bad. I'm sick and I'm tired because I'm not those things. It doesn't matter if the symptom is there or not, but I'm still not those things. I am whole. I'm blessed. I'm strong. I'm intelligent. I'm vital. I've got the wisdom and mind of God. I have the ability to change my life and the world around me by standing, having done all other things, continuing to stand, knowing that once I'm willing to stand forever, I will never have to stand for long. Well, and bringing the concept of identity in and, and, and marrying it to this, the concept of 
pre- being present minded and living in the present moment, um, that hit me in a different way just now. And it was incredibly powerful because I think a lot of times when we're progressing, uh, an eerie sense of this is too good can come over us sometimes. And it can cause you to fear the future. It can cause you to fear, will I be able to maintain this high identity tomorrow and the next day and the next day? And so when you combine the highest identity of, of highest self with the present moment, it, 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 it makes it seamless and it gets rid of all that fear and you know well I'm I am these things right now in this moment so I am successful and continuing on I just I just love the idea that it it cuts off the future um you know just gosh well can I keep it like let's take a like let's say somebody's trying to quit smoking um and we you and I talked about this just the other day and you were giving this beautiful analogy about you know, well, you're not smoking right now in your present moment and, and to project that fear into the next hour or even the next day is what causes you to fail. Mm-hmm. So if you're not smoking in this present moment as of right now, guess what? You're not a smoker. You're not a smoker. Yeah. And we can overlay that with so, so many things. Well, one thing you said to the fear of being able to maintain this higher level that word, key word there, underscore, is maintain. You're talking about maintenance. Again, you're going back to, mm, yeah. I'm going to do this in my strength. I'm going to have to roll up my sleeves and go out here and rearrange stuff, get my hammer to maintain this <laughs> success that I think that I am totally responsible for, but that's wrong. Yeah. There's no maintenance required in the outward expression of life. It's all inward in the present moment of the sensual perception of magnificence, the work of art that we are. You know, our natural identities are linked to this cluster of energy that determines exactly what quantum energy is going to form around us. So the person that's maintaining, for example, the highest viewpoint of their wealth, let's say it's just monetary gain, monetary riches, and they're maintaining that the quantum energetics of that will form the manifestation of those finances. It will begin to show up through the genius of purpose being realized, the wisdom of God and counsel, uh, vitalizing your daily pursuits, whatever the ingenuity that's required for those, the, the massive uh, wealth to begin to manifest in your life follows that mindset But the mindset comes first. Yes. And that's all we're responsible for. That's our 50% in the the act of creation. And the universe, warehousing, the the vastness of all the things planned for you begins Mm -hmm. to release that. And and it's attracted to you. And I don't know how it gets here. (laughs) We're starting to see it through the particle colliders. We're beginning to understand through understanding the God particle and how it works and how things are formed and how energy is vibrating on certain levels to where it, it's staying where it belongs. It's found the oasis, the space that was created through your belief for it to begin moving in to occupy that space to where you can actually touch it. But that's second, that's not first. And we don't build that wow. with hammers. We build it by looking within and in gratitude, with gratitude, expecting it and nothing less. Life has a way of really narrowing our vision. And Steve, you always have this amazing ability to take us um, up to the highest peak and allow us to see sort of an aerial view of how all of this works. And I find that to be so empowering every single time we talk about it. Because, um, again, life wants you to look at the tiny microscopic issues, issue one, issue two. You know, I mean, our days are filled up with so many tiny little personal details. And so to sort of be able just to fly and soar so high and see exactly how all of this is working and how it's working for our good and it's working toward completion and it's working toward perfection um, is one of the most powerful mindsets to, you know, sort of lay as a foundation. Whack-a-mole is not a way to get rid of the moles, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Try that out. Unplug it. But that's what the ego wants you to do. <laughs> it wants you to run, to be tossed to and fro, zigzag, run over here and whack at it. Yeah. Run over this way and whack at that problem. Go over here and take care of them. Go over this, back over here and give them a piece of your mind. Mm. Show them who's boss. Tell them where they went wrong. 
Instruct them on how to live their life better. Tell them how to be more like you. That's the ego functioning. That's the whack-a-mole way of life, and it doesn't work. Mm. You know, I have a sort of an offshoot question about um, just sort of the inner workings of life. I've been, you know, we talked, we haven't talked about it recently, but we talked many times about hiking and forest bathing and being out in nature. And recently I've, I've come to find myself sort of wondering, you know, how far is it okay to get from that natural original state of, of existing in nature and with nature? Um, because it seems like the more, the faster the world gets and the more things progress in life, the further we move from the original state, because I mean, if we're trying to pursue our original state, the original state of nature has to have this huge impact on us. And so how, how important is it really to continually make sure that we are reconnecting, not just with our original source energy, but the original source energy that's in the earth and in the world as well? I would say that it is everything um, because it is, yeah. <laughs> it is, that's how important it is. Uh, st- you know, stay in the, stay in the forest in, of life, remain there. Even, and I'm speaking of course, proverbially, but take the you know, forest bathing is so important. Having a hygge space in your home is so vital to disconnecting from confusion and condemnation and judgment and negativity and fear and worry and doubt and all of the things that the world is continually bombarding its occupants with. Mm-hmm. Go sit in a garden. <laughs> get, 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 take your house plants out on the patio and get some sunshine and fresh air with them <laughs> and commune. Yes. And it's so, it is so important that we do that because this is what we're observing. It's part of our observations of natural life. Plant life is, is vital. Uh, I mean, the vitality of plant life, it's living, and it's living its best life. It's, it's reaching up for more sunlight, and it's, it's, it has the, the replenishment of oxygen, and the forces of life are taking place, and we share space and energy with life around us when we do that. And we disconnect. You, we can do it, you can do it through music. And there are many ways to do this, to unplug from the reality of negativity and back into the positivity of growth and life mm-hmm. and oneness and in a vertical pursuit of our own development. Well, and, and, and nature is so profound in that, like you just said, it has this innate energy that it gives so freely. And I think that's why it's so fun. It's so exciting to, to walk in the grass barefoot or to feel the sunshine on your face or to go forest bathing because it's so, it's such an easy energy reciprocity in those moments. Well, we wrestle with this, don't we? When we are planning our uh, kinetic belief retreats, we find a place and, oh, this is a, a, just an extraordinary hotel, has all the amenities, and, and then you get into the, the ballroom or wherever they're trying to put you, and it's concrete and carpet, and you know No why? windows. No windows. <laughs> Can't we just very go camping? <laughs> Can't like, we all okay, go camping? Okay, hold on, time out. Pull the plug on this. Where is that forest? Yeah. Where can we all meet? Out in the wilderness, under the stars, perhaps, by the big campfire. And just be and celebrate life together. Because this is what you're observing. Again, while our observations literally shift the universe, and it does it on a particle-by-particle basis to create the physical lives that we are experiencing day-to-day, we have the infinite, we have the the complete infinite ability to change the results of our viewpoints of manifesting our objective choices for reality. That's power. Who the heck are we? What kind of superhero are you? It's pretty magnificent, actually. Yes. Created in the image of a creator that created all of this. If we really knew the power within us, every single living human being, the creative power to dynamically change the world today, and it, we change the world by changing ourselves and our own expectations, not by looking out and fearfully trying to manipulate what we see that's wrong around us, but by casting down what's wrong within us. You know, if we want something to exist, the substance of our kinetic belief has got to start perceiving it to be so. And this is so important. We just had a a young man wrote in the other day, talking about how his life has changed 
drastically over, I think he's listening, I think he said he'd counted maybe 40 podcasts. He started at the beginning and he's going through some of our, the library of our podcast <clears throat> and practicing these things that we're talking about. He's seeing the manifestation of total change in his life, but it's happening from within. Yeah. Things aren't necessarily showing up in the physical, although it is in his, his letter to us, he was talking about his professional life and how he's prospering in new ways and the way that it's developing and changing. But all of that outward change began with the inward change yeah. by him meditating upon these principles that we talk about day in and day out and that we guide people through in the 100-day Law of Attraction uh, Manifestation Journal. That's perfect because I was just uh, this morning wanting to, to share this excerpt from the journal because it really spoke to me. Um, and, it, and you, you tell us, you say within the natural state of negativity, decay blazons the soul with condemnation and Unco- accompanying guilt separates you from a sense of worthiness. So without unconditional love for self, you cannot attract your perfected life, unconditionally love and forgive others too. be grateful and acknowledge that all are unique and wonderfully made approve of yourself just the way you are and then change. Mm. Yeah, and the change comes to us. You know, the world's, all of the world's thought disciplines, Maggie, all of the religions, all of the sciences, all of those things for the first time in, in existence have intersected. Mm. That's proven out what you just read from the journal. Uh, these truths to be forever true. And this is this excites me to no end that we have science and and religion, much of what they believed in the past being turned upside down. Yeah. But they're intersecting in this place of agreement where we can no longer uh, disagree with one another. Yeah. Because the, the pen on the paper of the scientists is tracing the words of the pen on the paper from the religionists, mm-hmm. which is beginning to trace the words of those that have been writing from all the different uh, thought disciplines. And it's an exciting time to live. It is. And this is the foundation that we get to cling to when maybe we wake up one day not feeling a certain way, not feeling as good as we want to. Maybe our emotions are not lining up with what we know to be true. And so the foundation of, of, of even going as deep as you take us into science, being able to cling to that when we don't feel it is mm. so, so mm. powerful. You know, a firm foundation, say on a house, on a fair weather day, it's, it, it almost doesn't even matter. But when those storms come or when, when a disruption enters your life, it's everything. It's everything to have that knowledge within you. Well, that's so true because you can tell somebody that is, you can tell somebody that, you know what, you are joy. <laughs> they can yeah. say, well, I don't feel like it, so <laughs> I'm not. I, I am, am I, not. Steve? I am not Miss Joy. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, but you are. But, and that's but to your point. Yeah. We can prove it scientifically that this is the stuff that you're made of. But if you and if you continue to say that I am led by my negative feelings and emotions, I don't feel like I'm joyful. I don't feel happy. Well, then of course you are. Uh, rearranging truly mm-hmm. the substance of what you are. But what was once only acknowledged, say, through faith, various faiths, is now being understood through quantum mechanics. Yes. You know, while using faith, for example, a person chooses to simply uh, be something, or, or they, they believe something is true, whether they, they've seen it or not. But while remaining unwavering in their faith in the past, Without even the proof, but they just, they believe it. You can't change my mind. I see this in, in my Bible. I see this in writing. I believe it because uh, what, whatever my, the basis of the faith is. Poof. They become healed. <laughs> the doctor told them they were going to die, but they said, no, I believe it because I put a fleece out and the dew wrote, I'm healed in the early morning cool temperature, and so I believe I'm healed, and three weeks later, the cancer is gone. Or they become wealthy, or their, their life changes completely, according to their faith. But now, like you're saying, Meg, quantum entanglement, for example, it just simply describes the relationship between two bodies of energy. That's what we're talking about. Two completely bo- two bodies of energy as they begin to interact and they begin to entangle based upon the person's belief for restoration 
And those bodies of energy, as they entangle with one another, according to the bias of the belief of the believer, according to someone's faith, and rearranges the, the empirical form, rearranges the world to completely get rid of the, the sickness mm. that was in the body. So our faith, our kinetic belief, which is an immovable belief, it, I'm not going to be double-minded. I've written this in my journal. journal. It's my article of faith. This is who I am, therefore I am. And so that becomes bonded together with the circumstances of my life, changing substance in alignment with my belief. Wow. That's kinetic belief. And that alters every detail, how you perceive all the details of your life. Because what once was a flippant uh, phone conversation with a friend is now, uh, you know, universally powerful qu on a quantum level words that are going to alter the course of, of your life path. <laughs> totally <laughs> so, alter it. So all of a sudden, all these little details that we didn't think mattered too much, everything matters because we are that powerful. The what we our focus the the almost it's almost like it's a temperature that you realize that your focus becomes like a laser that can rearrange things in a mm -hmm. and like you just said on this quantum level and so realizing that you you think goodness i'm walking around with a loaded weapon i need to be mindful here i need to watch where i point this thing and you are you really are everything in this universe is wonderfully connected with each other so if you see this atrocity for example taking place somewhere else in the world if you see these images in the media that are mm -hmm. saying showing these these horrible things that are happening to people somewhere else on the planet mm -hmm. and you're thinking why doesn't someone do something about it what can i possibly do this is this should not be tolerated there is something that every one of us can do about it and it's from within yeah. and it's over the positive image and imagination and an unconditional love for life as it should be and the expectation the imagery of that the desire for that the gratitude for that in the present tense as though it is that's the thing that changes the world yes. that's what puts a stop to all the other stuff that's how we are effective in the world today. If we kinetically believe to influence one thing that we think needs to be influenced, our thoughts will rearrange it. That's, that is the transcendence of the collective. That's how it is happening. That's how it will happen and continue. Wow. We have that ability, and it's innate within all of us to influence the world that we live in and occupy. And it's by meditating to use our thoughts, not just for self, but in gratitude for life on this planet, that we interact with anything that we choose to interact with. There are no limits to it. By kinetically choosing our beliefs and maintaining those without, without wavering, without second-guessing and becoming double-minded to consider all these other options, Successful kinetic believers, we attract people into our lives. We do it all the time. We, we need more. We're building our team every day. We're, you know, the things that we're involved with now are growing. And, and we don't put an ad in a paper. We just go out the door and we say, well, thank you, universe. We're about to meet the, the next admin assistant in our <laughs> lives. And it happens. Personal assistant. And it happens. And it's perfect every time. Yes. But we attract people like that. Circumstances, objects that we may have chosen in our lives. But understanding, like you were saying earlier, understanding how, for example, quantum entanglement works, having knowledge of how even faith works, and the power of belief to attract and change the way that we change things, it, it, it increases the velocity of manifestations into our lives. The creative process, you know, the creative process is a process of surrender, not one of control. Yes. Control says, I have to go out here and change them. I got to make them <laughs> straighten up. And, and we saw, we saw uh, a gentleman the other day out at the outlet malls. <laughs> And he, he was so grumpy. And he yelled out to his college, two college age sons. What did he say? Specific? Sound what you hear with me. Like, get over here. 
You, you stay with me. You get over here and stay with me. I think they were walking time. too far behind him or something. But then that's, that's a, a, a petty example. But the, the point of it is. <laughs> but a relatable one. <laughs> the creative process is one of surrender and not control. Yes, yes. And every person was created in the image of the creator of the universe and has within themselves the unique and the personal perception of a reality that creates their reality. And by kinetically believing to see, believing to image, we attract to ourselves what we perceive to be our realities. Yes. There are, well, you know, most people, most people simply do not realize that they have a choice in how to live out their lives. And so they are you know, running from one fire to the other. And more often than not, if there's not a fire, they're going to set one. But mostly, they, they just simply resign to living a life that they, just, they don't want to live. And they were partly, mostly, and I would even say completely responsible for setting up the life that they are living. Because they are options, always options. And so they spend all of their days complaining about their situation, complaining about their health, complaining about their finances. And then if, if, if they should ever get their situation to where it's something they like and their health is good and they have great finances, they go and they complain about other people's situations and other people's health and other people's finances. But you may begin, we can begin right now eliminating right now today, the things that we dislike and Put those out of our mind and not allow them to take to occupy space anymore rent free and be the architects of the life that we fully expect to manifest in our lives. And we do it by casting down the habits, casting down the personalities that are preventing us from manifesting our greatest lives, which is always in the present tense moment. And what we believe to be hard Difficult sacrifices are actually, actually, and you, you will probably have to take my word for this and Megan's too. It's actually easier than should we not make the sacrifice. It seems like it would be impossible to get rid of this person that has access into your life. That's creating a hell on earth, but it's actually so much better for you if you do. Changing the course of your destiny has got to be made right now. The decisions right now in pursuit of your greatest life. There's no tomorrow in all of this. You make the decision right now that, hey, this is such a limited amount of time that I have to be an expression of the, the masterpiece that I was put here to be. And so we deny the influence of negativity, and do it for your greater good. Actually, when you do it for you, you're doing it for the advancement of all of humanity. You're doing it for your best life. And your best life, by the way, is essential to mine. Yeah. Mm. That's why we are so wow. passionate about this. Maybe it's selfish. I want you to be the best <laughs> you can be for me. <laughs> There it is. Stop whatever it is that you're doing. If you're living this round robin existence, not going anywhere, and go back to your original genius of purpose. It's within you. And if you seek it and you ask the questions of why am I here, the universe will answer you. And then just be brave enough to fear not and to go on and embrace the qualities of your differences, the things that makes you unlike anybody else. Because this is the beginning. You are at the very first Part of your journey of distancing yourself from all of the, the mediocre activities that have just perhaps resigned you to an average life. And then go on and be unwavering in your steadfast belief, kinetically believing, which just simply means by unwavering to begin moving toward activities that will elevate you and reposition your life trajectory toward this massive accomplishment Massive attraction, massive disruption. A person's best life is not something to be obtained. A person's best life is defined by your willingness to be you in this moment. And then success 
Well, it becomes inevitable when you practice just a few simple disciplines every day in your moment. And then by reviewing all of the, the daily practices of kinetic belief journaling, which you can get a copy of the guided uh, journal on our website. When you do that, the small daily manifestations lead to this extraordinary and the stunning results just three months from now, and even a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, and on and on it goes. Where would you like to be in your future? Well, see yourself there today. Who will you be? What will you be doing? Have you ever even really thought about this? Because this is your life. And the fact that you're listening to this podcast now reveals the source of your success. Is It's beckoning your attention. Nothing's by chance. You're listening right now because you should be listening. And your authentic destiny is it's, it's restless on the inside of you. And you know it. I'm not telling you something you don't know. But it's calling you home. It wants you to come back. To rewild yourself back to all that you are. So plan right now on how it is that you wish to spend this life and do it in this moment. And if you don't do it, then the accidentals will. And you'll just be another victim to all of those things. The most beautiful thing that we can experience in this life is each other's best and the mystery of ourselves. Fall in love with yourself and your differences and your unique genius. And then with the conviction of your soul and your articles of faith, you're going to find that you are far more capable of being you than anyone else is. And then lean forward into action in the direction of your imagined dreams, casting down the fears of failure, the fear of what they might say or about you, and the authentic warrior from your within is going to lead you to your marvelous fate. Just say this out loud. The essence of my higher being. The essence of my higher being. Connected to higher consciousness. Connected to higher consciousness. Is my partner. Is my partner. In all my decision making. In all my decision making. I choose to saturate my thoughts. I choose to saturate my thoughts. With positive affirmations. With positive affirmations. Before I go to sleep. Before I go to sleep. I am healthy. I am healthy. I have limitless energy. I have limitless energy. And with the genius of my wisdom. And with the genius of my wisdom. I am decisive. I am decisive. When the right choices appear before me. When the right choices appear before me. And I always make the good decision. I always make the good decision. To be optimistically happy. To be optimistically happy. Regardless. Regardless. <laughs> And regardless. And regardless. <laughs> and regardless. <laughs> and regardless. And I agree. And I agree. It's a choice. It's a choice. I am transforming each day. I'm transforming each day. Navigating. Navigating. Toward my abundant life. Toward my abundant life. I'm energizing. I'm energizing. The substance of kinetic belief. The substance of kinetic belief. To attract abundance. To attract abundance. Through the words I speak. Through the words that I speak. I vividly imagine my abundance. Mm, I vividly imagine my abundance. And my abundant life. And my abundant life life at all times at all times i have more than enough i have more than enough to not only meet all of my needs and desires <laughs> to not only meet all of my needs and desires but to underwrite my passions but to underwrite my passions and abundantly share them and abundantly share them with those i love with those that i love and those i don't like <laughs> and those I don't like. But I love them. <laughs> but I love them. I am full of confidence. I'm full of confidence. <laughs> and overflowing. And overflowing. With unconditional love. With unconditional love. For every life form. For every life form. And the woods and the forest. And the woods and the forest. And the stars. <laughs> and the stars. I am full of the belief. I am full of the belief. That I can do all things. That I can do all things. Experience all things. Experience all things. Through the power of my kinetic belief. Through the power of my kinetic belief. And for knowing who I am. And for knowing who I am. I am thoroughly grateful. I am thoroughly grateful. Steve, we're going to come back here tomorrow and do this all over again. I can't wait. Isn't that exciting? It's so exciting. I feel like yes. um, we're doing dailies, but we don't dare say that. <laughs> oh, we've learned not to. You know, don't, <laughs> well, we, we don't will, look it in the we eye. We will keep doing them as long as we <laughs> as don't long as we do them. pressure ourselves. <laughs> if yeah. you do want to check out the journal that we talked about today, that's going to be at stephencanyon.com. And make sure you follow Stephen on Instagram at Stephen Canyon. And, oh, and we didn't mention the... The phone number, 844-844-0049. You can send a text to that number if you want to hear uh, from Stephen and get some encouraging text messages from time to time. Sending out much love and light to all you mm. KB creatives yeah. all around the world. Oh, yeah. And thanks, as usual, Steve, for all the wisdom. And in the words of oh. Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, 
Go out and paint the stars.